In this problem, we're told to find the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the sine to the 7th power of theta times the cosine to the 5th power of theta d theta. So we're going to solve this integral, and we're going to use trig to do it. So what you should notice here is we have cosine of theta to an odd exponent, or cosine of theta to the 5th, right? And then sine to an odd exponent. So they're both to odd exponents. And so when they're both to odd exponents, uh, what you're going to want to do is take the lower odd exponent. So in this case, it's going to be 5. And what we're going to do is break a cosine off from it. So essentially what we're going to do is, if I just rewrite this, 0 to the pi over 2, we just leave the sine to the 7th power, right, theta, and then what we're going to do, want to do is take a cosine out of this, right? And so if we take a cosine out of this, it's just going to become cosine to the 4th power theta, and then we're going to have a cosine of theta left, right? So d theta. So all we did was take one off. So whenever you have them both odd, uh, you just want to take one off the lower one. And so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to try and convert this cosine uh, to the fourth power, right, theta, and we're going to want to convert this into being sine, right? We want it to be sine. And the way we're going to do that is by using uh, one of the identities, which tells us the cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta is equal to 1, right? And so we want it to be in terms of sine, so what we're going to want to do is subtract uh, this cosine, right? Or we can subtract this sine. So essentially, the cosine squared of theta is going to be equal to 1 minus the sine squared of theta, right? So all we did was move the theta to the other side. And so now what we can do is take this and replace it, right? So the first thing you do is just break one off, and then you want to convert uh, whatever you have left into the other one, right? So in this case, it's sine. So we're just going to be left with the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the seventh power of theta times, and then this is just going to become 1 minus the sine squared of theta, Right, but keep in mind, uh, this is just cosine squared, right? So what we would have to do is rewrite this as the cosine squared of theta squared, right? So we just took cosine squared of theta, which is just 1 minus the sine squared of theta, plug that in. So we still have this 2, right? So we got to keep the 2 up there. So 2 times the cosine of theta d theta. So now we've got it like this, and what we're going to want to do is now we have uh, this whole thing in sine, and we just have this cosine off the edge. So now what we're going to want to do is use u substitution in order to get rid of this cosine. And the way we do that is just by taking u and setting it to uh, the opposite, or right? Whatever is going to, whatever is derivative is going to make this uh, cosine, right? So we know the derivative of the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta. So right, so we basically just choose the other one. So in this case, uh, we broke off a cosine, so we choose the sine that's going to get rid of this. So we set u to sine of theta. Du is going to be equal to the cosine of theta d theta, and then we want to solve for d theta, so d theta is equal to du over cosine of theta. And so now we're just going to rewrite our integral, so we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2, and now we're going to want to do is whenever you do this, replace whatever sine of theta with the letter u, right? u substitution, so u to the 7th times 1 minus u squared squared times the cosine of theta, and then we replace d theta with du over the cosine of theta. And what you should notice is these are going to cancel. So I'm just going to rewrite it. These canceled, so it's just going to be this right here. Uh, pi over 2, uh, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of u to the 7th times 1 minus uh, u squared squared, right, du. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And so what I'm going to do is multiply this out here. So leaving the u to the 7th, if we go ahead and multiply this out, right, just do, uh, just multiply it out, right? So 1, it's going to become 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the 4th. So all we did was just multiply this out, right? Hopefully you know how to do that. So we just multiply this out, and this is what we're going to get, right? Because it's just 1 minus u squared times 1 minus u squared. All we did was the FOIL method, right? So now that's that. And so uh, we have du, right? And I'm going to go ahead and erase the screen. I'm just going to rewrite this because I'm running out of room. So uh, if you need this, write it down, but I'm going to erase it in a second. So so we're just, we have the integral now from 0 to pi over 2. And then we add u to the 7th times 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the 4th du. So what we want to do to solve this is multiply this out, right? So we just want to have nothing multiplied by each other, just have uh, variables to exponents, right? So 0 to pi over 2 
u to the seventh times one, right? We're just multiplying these out. Is just u to the seventh. And then u to the seventh times minus two u squared is just minus two. And then we add the exponents, right? So seven plus two is nine. So minus two u to the nine. u to the seventh uh, times u to the fourth is just gonna be u to the eleventh, right? Because we add the exponents when you multiply du. And so now we've got it in this form, right? And we, we can take the inner roll of this because we just have variables to exponents. So if we go ahead and take uh, the antiderivative of this, right? And then we're going to plug in these numbers to actually solve for the definite value. Uh, it's just going to become u to the 8 over 8 minus 2. And this is going to be u to the 10 over 10, right? Plus u to the 12 over 12, right? Hopefully by now you know how to do this because you got to be able to do this quick when you solve these. So, right, we just add one to the exponent and divide by it for each of these. So we've got u to the 8 over 8 minus 2u to the 10 over 10 plus u to the 12 over 12 and we're evaluating it so what you have to know is that our evaluation is going to change right so keep in mind what we set u equal to we said u is equal to the sine of theta right and so whenever you we have it in u right so if we're going to evaluate this with u we have to make sure our boundaries are in set in terms of u because right uh, i've been writing pi over 2 here but really you what you want to do is your boundaries change right so your boundaries are actually 1 over 0 and the reason that is is because uh, we have pi over 2 here, but we say u equals the sine, right? And then we want to plug in these values because we know u equals, and we know theta is pi over 2. So our upper value is really equal to 1. So when we evaluate this, it's 1. And then u is equal to our lower bound, the sine of, and then theta is 0. So u equals the sine of 0, which is a 0. So really, we're just evaluating this from 0 to 1. And so in these cases, I've actually been writing this wrong. So... Just keep in mind these are really just zero to one. That's my bad, but because I've been writing it as u, but really until we solve it, it doesn't really matter what we write. But sorry about that. But just keep this in mind. Uh, you have to change the bounds whenever you solve for u. And so now we're just going to plug it in, right? So we just want to plug in one, get a value, and then minus whatever zero is. And you should notice if we plug in zero, it's just going to be zero. So really, this is just the value of plugging in one. So if I plug in one, it's u to the eight minus u to the 10 is just 10 minus 2 over 10 is just minus 1 over 5 and then it's plus 1 over 12 and so i'm just going to rewrite this uh all of these go into 120 so i'm just going to rewrite them as uh, over 20. so you can rewrite it as 15 over 120 minus 24 over 120 plus 10 over 120 and so right because we just multiply this to get it over 120 and so that's going to be 15 right because there's eight 15s in 120 so we just multiply by 15, multiply this by 24, and then multiply this by 10. And so if you do this, you, you're going to get it's 1 over 120. So yeah, your answer to this problem is going to be equal to 1 over 120. And so yeah, that's how you solve this problem.